To begin with, I wish to thank Mark for this opportunity to visit beautiful Basel, my first time here. Thank you. And um, so we're going to be talking uh, this morning about a study we recently completed where uh, research volunteers were paid to come in and drink alcohol five, five days a week for, from Monday through Friday. And we're looking at the PETH formation that occurs in that process. Um, so this study design, let's see if I get this right. Yeah. Study design, we have 22 individuals. They're initially required to have one week of abstinence verified and documented by transdermal alcohol monitors. And as we know, one week is not enough to totally wash out the breath. They were randomized to two groups, 0.4 or 0.8 grams per kilogram administration of alcohol. And they got that alcohol for five days, days one, two, three, four, and five. And following those five days of alcohol, then they had two weeks of abstinence to look at the PETH elimination. Uh, PETH was repeatedly measured every 15 minutes or so up to two hours, 120 minutes, and then again at 360 minutes. And on day one, we had that repeated measurement of PEP, and on day five, we duplicated that again. But on days two, three, and four, PEP was only measured twice, before drinking alcohol and 120 minutes after drinking alcohol. And our real goal was to look to see whether or not PEP is accumulating day to day with daily drinking, uh, and whether or not it might be related to dose. So here are the day one and day five data where we have the repeated measurements of PEP. And the lower dose of alcohol, you know, PEP increased. This is plotted on a log of the nanogram per mil PEP level. And you see the increase in PEP reaching a maximum up to about 60 to 120 minutes. And day one replicated day five. In the eight gram per kilogram, you also see the PEF increases. But what you see is there's a baseline shift. You know, from day one, they started a higher baseline level on day five. And again, you see the increase, but it's starting it from a higher level. And overall, these are highly, highly significant effects of, of dose uh, and day and um, time. Now, on the repeated five days a week, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, measuring before to after, 120 minutes after drinking alcohol. What we saw is each day the PEF value is going up each day. But we were really surprised to see that there's a zigzag pattern where it goes back down again by the morning of the next day. So PEF goes up and then comes back down, it goes up and comes back down, and we saw this zigzag pattern from day to day to day. And that was true for the low dose and for the high dose. And, and shown here, I, I put, because this is on a log scale, here's the 20 nanogram per mil cutoff. Here's the 200 nanogram per mil cutoff. These are significant levels of PEF that are being measured. And with the higher dose of alcohol, the PEF is regularly going above the 200 nanogram per mil cutoff. And that's from a single day's drinking. Drinking one, on one occasion, eight grams per kilogram, and it goes up above the 200, and then by the next day, it comes back down again. We are really surprised to see that. And overall, there's a significant upward trending slope on the baseline measure. Now, just looking at the baseline data only, we see a significant effect of days and a dose-by-day interaction, where at the high dose, the baseline value is going up, and that does not occur at the lower dose of alcohol. So these are the same data of the daily drinking, but now we're showing the individual subjects. 
from day to day to day to day, and the broken lines are the individual subjects. And the shaded error area is the 95% confidence interval. And then there's the solid line is the mean. And what you can see is each day, F is going down by the morning of the next day, and then it goes up, and then it goes down by the morning of the next day. And so we, we are reproducing this effect between individuals and within, a, within an individual from day to day to day. So it's highly reproducible phenomenon. Now, um, as was referenced earlier today by Professor Weinman, uh, non originally published five days of drinking. And they were reporting there's an accumulation of PEF across five days of drinking. But their study design was different than what we're doing. First of all, they have only seven subjects. Secondly, this daily drinking is evening drinking. They're drinking in the evening alcohol. And so when they measure PEF the next morning, it hasn't had as much time to drop down and go down. And so what they were measuring is a cumulative increase in PEP. And of course, once they stop drinking after five days, then you see the normal rate of decay with the biologic half-life of PEP. But even within these data, some of the individual subject data presented, there's evidence of a decline from here, eight hours to 20 hours the, the next day. And so you're seeing some evidence of a decline in individual subjects. Now, also, Professor Weinman with Schrock published another paper. And here is a single day of alcohol. And here's the single day increase. And there's the normal biologic decay curve. But, but you also see in that first 24 hours, there was a very steep rate of decay. And we normally think of that as, okay, yeah, so half concentration every half-life, yes, and so nothing was made of this. But what we're now reporting is that from two hours to 24 hours, there's a huge, steep decline in PEF level. And notice the time scale here is 24 hours. And you compare that to the terminal elimination phase, and now the time scale is different. But when you look at the first order rate constants for these calculated half-lives, you see there's a huge difference between that, the rate constant for the first 24 hours and the rate constants for the terminal elimination phase. We're, we're arguing this is a, a different phenomenon of rapid disappearance of PEF. And there's two phases of removing, removing PEF from a single drink, from a single drinking episode. The rapid phase, which occurs over a, a one-day period, and then the terminal elimination phase, where you normally see this four to six or eight-day half-life. And so we conclude, clearly, PEF is increased acutely with a, a single day of drinking. Uh, it does accumulate across days, but only when you're drinking higher amounts of alcohol. Enough alcohol to overcome that rate of disappearance from one day to the next. Uh, so accumulation is only seen in the higher doses, and what we are, and it's being, the, the observed amount of increase is being diminished by this unexpected but highly reliable decrease from one day to the next. And therefore, we really suggest the need to consider this two-phase model to explain the disappearance of PEP from alcohol. And this is going to be very, very important when you try to relate the amount of PEP to the amount of drinking and the reasons you and we have to account for this rapid decline from one day to the next. And we, we do not know the mechanism of this phenomenon. Is it a distribution phenomenon? Is it an enzymatic reaction that's not here to, heretofore known and explained? Uh, we're actually speculating it might be involved in lipid metabolism. And uh, 
lipid metabolism in the liver and with uh, various enzymes. But we don't know. And so I thank you very much for your attention, and I appreciate the opportunity to present these interesting data. And I'm very interested in hearing your comments. Thank you very much for your presentation. Are there any questions or comments? Yes. Many, many thanks. Um, I have an idea that uh, it should be very, very interesting to to compare different patients regarding the biological background. Uh, some people are really, really uh, fresh regarding alcohol, and some people who are not really fresh with biological lesion at the time. Uh, so my, my, my question is, uh, it would be very different to, to, to observe the same thing between uh, healthy people and uh, sick people, particularly linked with alcohol. Yeah, so these were not alcoholics. These were not, they, they were normal, healthy volunteers that reported drinking at least one time per month five or more drinks. So they drank five or more drinks in a day, at least one day a month. Uh, but they were not uh, clinically diagnostic, severe, normal social drinkers who occasionally drank heavily. There's another question over there. Thank you. Uh, with respect to the rapid decline, um, and also related to what uh, Wolfgang mentioned earlier, could that be related to um, let's say a non-red blood cell related fraction of uh, PEF? Um... Uh, that's my thinking, is that that's PEF that's being formed but not incorporated in, into the membrane itself. But, but we don't know. Thank you. Here, Professor. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Um, when you took the sample, it was 120 minutes after uptake of ethanol. Is that After beginning drinking alcohol. Beginning drinking alcohol. And the, the, so drinking, it's about the, the drinking period was about 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. So it's 120 minutes after the beginning, it's 100 minutes before, before and after. Before. Well, we took it before yeah. and then again yeah. after. But yeah, so what I want to say is 120 at minutes after. At that time, time, the alcohol is about the maximum. Just about the In maximum. the blood. But the pet might still be higher after uh, the time during elimination of the alcohol you still have formation of it yes <laughs> so uh, uh, but but no what we typically see is you know, the path is reaching a peak about in the 60 to 120 minute time period and by six hours time. later it's going uh, down yes. yeah and that's actually interesting because yeah. There's still alcohol present and it's already going down. Yeah, we So we, there's a, there's a, there are two processes. It's still being built and on the other way it's also right. eliminated in this time between 120 right. to 360. They are still building right. of it. Right. So it's even faster what, what right. is decreasing. Yeah, in, in pharmacokinetics, this, this, uh, this is the absorption phase, you know, and here it's rate of formation, but then it's being distributed and in, into the red blood cell membranes or who knows where, and then it's being eliminated. And so, so those functions integrate together, but we have reproducibly seen by six hours, PEF is tending to decline already. We didn't see that in the previous studies, actually. In the first study in 2016. Yeah. Have you, have you ever it? seen it? Because we've seen it now in yeah. three different experiments. Uh, as you indicated, 
it's a total surprise. The thing that we saw was different from your study was the, the fact that you, uh, we took a dose before the alcohol was consumed on days two, three, four, and five. And my understanding was you took a single collection on days two, three, four, and five. And so that, I think those are all things that have to be considered. This, this is unusual and unexpected, so I think that's important to say. Okay.